Here is considered one of Kentucky's few unobstructed views of the sunset, but we won't be here that long. Today, we're going to be literally a stone's throw away from the Ohio River and visit the house of someone who was a respected singer, actress, and was in probably the most iconic Christmas movie ever. Hey everyone, it's Cashew. Today's adventure brings us to Augustus, Kentucky, to the Rosemary Clooney house. This is a house that Rosemary had to get away from Hollyweird, sort of the way Agnes Moorhead had her farm and home up in Dayton, Ohio. This is also supposedly one of the largest, if not the largest, collection of white Christmas memorabilia. So let's go check it out. Our adventure starts here. According to the tour guide, the owners of the house were reluctant to sell this to Rosemary, but she finally was able to get them to sell it to her, and she had it pretty much gutted and refurbished. I don't know if you can see from the glare, but this is Rosemary Clooney with Bob Hope and his wife. Here's a picture of Rosemary in the house, and I'll show you where she stood. And here's where she stood in that photo. And here are pictures of Rosemary in various stages of her career. Yeah, and she lost some of it a few times. And I go, but this is what everybody comes to see. This chair was Rosemary Clooney's, and she would often look out this window. This was the dining room, and she sat and looked out the window here. This was Rosemary's actual rug. And up here, this is one of two chandeliers she got from a hotel that was being torn down in Memphis, Tennessee. This blouse was one of many designed by Edith Head for the film The Stars Are Singing. This mink coat used to be full length, and when Rosemary's sister borrowed it, she accidentally tore it with her high heel, and so it was cropped. This dress is one from early in her career. Down here they have a Rosemary Clooney street, and here she is christening it. This is the original street sign. This section of the room is devoted to George Clooney, her nephew. This is a costume from Leatherheads. Here's his costume from Oh Brother, Where Art Thou? And if you happen to see the Monuments Men, this is his costume from that movie. Rosemary has a brother named Nick Clooney, who was anchor of Channel 12 News in Cincinnati, and he is also George Clooney's dad. And you can see the family resemblance. Here's Nick when he was younger. On the wall they painted the Clooney family tree. And at the bottom is a case with some of her albums and memorabilia. Rosemary posed for this photo for Red Book Magazine in 1953. And if you take a look at this black wrought iron railing, this was from her house in California. And this is how the railing looked outside. For you George Clooney lovers, here's a picture of him with Santa Claus. This room is part of the kitchen. And behind the door over here is the rest of the kitchen. Oh wow, check this out. These are Costumes from the stars are singing. It looks like this is an original poster from the movie. This was the costume Rosemary wore. These two costumes were worn by Anna Maria Alberghetti. And, uh, 
Rosemary's posed here with her brother Nick on the left. And the white sweater is Rosemary's husband, Jose Ferrer. Here's her costume from Red Garter, 1954. This dress was not worn by Rosemary, but it was in the film. Here's another movie that was considered a flop called Here Come the Girls. Rosemary was in it with Bob Hope and Arlene Dahl. The black dress on the right was Arlene's, and then the two costumes to the left of that were Bob Hope's. Rosemary did wear this costume on the left, and Bob Hope wore the one on the right. Hopefully you can see from the glare. Here are the two costumes I just showed you in the movie. That railing I showed you came from this house, and it has since been torn down. And here's how the house looked after it was torn down. I had not noticed this before, but these are roof tiles that had been from that house. This is pretty cool. This is her record player, and I'll show you in a minute her television from that house. Oh wow, look at this. This is the actual sign from White Christmas. This is Rosemary's living room, and they've turned it into the White Christmas exhibit. Wait till you see this place. They even have a reproduction of the cake that was in White Christmas. This hat was worn by Vera Ellen in White Christmas. And behind the hat are dolls of Rosemary and Vera Ellen. Oh wow, this is a great collection. The dress on the right was Vera Ellen's. The dress in the middle was Rosemary's. The dress on the left was the woman who played the housekeeper. And the coat and the robe in the back were Rosemary's. If you've seen the movie, there's a scene where Bing Crosby and Rosemary sing Count Your Blessings. In that scene, she's wearing this robe. Here are three more dresses from the movie. Well, sort of. The dress in the back is a reproduction. But the two in the front, Vera Ellen's is on the left and Rosemary's is on the right. And I'll try to show you a little closer, but Rosemary's dress is not as in good a condition because it wasn't preserved as well. I don't know if my camera will pick it up, but this dress is a little bit faded compared to Vera Ellen's, and I'll show you Vera's in a minute. If you've seen the movie, you'll recall Danny Kaye and Bing Crosby did a fan dance in it, and this is the fan that Danny Kaye used. And you see it's a little bit damaged on the left, that's where he was hitting Bing Crosby with it. Paramount Studios owns this fan, but they're allowed to keep it here as long as the museum exists. Here's a picture of Rosemary with George Chakiris from the movie, and he was also in West Side Story. And as an interesting side note, George and Vera Ellen both are from Norwood, Ohio. Here are the gloves that she wore in that picture. They even have George Chakiris's costume from White Christmas. This museum is amazing. This piano is the rehearsal piano for Bing Crosby and Rosemary Clooney. So Bing and Rosemary actually sat on that bench. This case is pretty cool. The dress on the right was a dress for a background dancer. Vera Ellen's dress is on the left. In the background, Bing Crosby's costume's on the left. And if you've seen the movie, the general's costume's on the right. I'm not sure if you can see from the glare, but Vera Ellen is wearing that costume in the back. This case is dedicated exclusively to George. This is one of the scrubs he wore when he was on ER. Apparently George was quite the athlete. He has quite a few trophies in baseball and tennis. Let's go upstairs and check out the second floor. I'm not sure if you can tell from the glare, but this is one of Rosemary's dresses. 
It doesn't say what movie it's from, though. This is the view from the second floor of Rosemary's house. And the tour guide told me that George Clooney owns a lot of property here in Augusta. Well, here's an unusual find. This gown was worn by George's prom date, Laura Laycock, in 1978 and featured in an issue of People magazine. And last but not least, here is Rosemary Clooney's bedroom. Here's a pair of Jose Ferrer's wingtip shoes. And here's a piece of Rosemary's Louis Vuitton luggage. Rosemary had written two or three books, and her brother Nick also wrote a couple. It's pretty wild to be standing in Rosemary Clooney's bedroom and looking at all the furniture that she actually sat on and used every day. This case is devoted to Dante DiPaolo. He was Rosemary Clooney's last husband, and they remained married until she died in 2002. Augusta is a really pretty, quaint, Mayberry-like town. And the U.S. Bank building reminds me of the courthouse in Andy Griffith's show. And right over here, Nina's. This is a shop owned by George Clooney's mom. I always find it a surreal experience walking through a celebrity's home. I've been to Graceland. Hunter S. Thompson's house and now Rosemary Clooney's home. And, you know, they're not there anymore, and yet you're walking through their house. It just feels like you're an invader. And you're seeing the furniture that they sat on and the beds they slept in. It's a, it's a very weird experience. Be sure to like, subscribe, and ring the notification bell. And if you know someone who would like to join us on our adventures, have them come along as well. Until next time, this is Cashew signing off. And here we are with George Clooney's mom, Nima. Nina. Nina. Yes. I also answer to hey you a lot. <laughs> uh, and I am standing in my sister-in-law Rosemary Clooney's house here in Augusta, Kentucky. Sits right on the beautiful Ohio River. And uh, it was a place that she very much enjoyed being. So I take great pleasure every time I come in here and I see the memorabilia and I remember great evenings having dinner here and uh, lots and lots of conversation and occasionally she sang. Now, are you surprised that George's career took off the way it did? George's career, uh, I knew George had the potential but having the potential doesn't always mean that you actually reach it. And uh, so I was hopeful and I'm very pleased that it did. But uh, it could well not have. It was just that he worked really hard at it. I met yesterday a woman whose mom worked with him selling shoes. Okay, Calvin. Yeah, and he said, he told her he wanted to go and, and become an actor, and she said she remembered like patting him on the head, going, "Well, that's good. You you go ahead. I'm sure you'll do fine." I know that woman. She yeah. told me that story too. Yeah. Well, thank you, Nina.